Welcome back to another episode of Red Tinted Glasses. Callum's remembered his glasses tonight. Callum, well done. Thank you so much. It was a close call. It was a close call. Very, very close. Um, it won't make the, the full version, but Callum just finished taking out his contact lenses just in time. So um, we're coming live straight after the full-time whistle, Aberdeen 2-0 victors over Hibernian tonight at Pataudry. Um, no script tonight, so this could be an interesting episode, but we'll start with a usual feature. Callum, off the bat, one word summary to, uh, for tonight's victory. Boring. It's what my gonna be. It's gonna be my word. It wasn't. It wasn't a great spectacle, but you know, move on. That's the main thing. But yeah, it wasn't very entertaining for a Friday night. How about you? Yeah, I think I think that'll be the large um, feeling amongst the support. It was a fairly comfortable win, but I'll just say pleasing. Um, you know, good to get back to winning ways before the international break, and kind of just show Hibs, you know, that we're we're still a force to be reckoned with in the league as well. And, you know, uh, I think that's us. We go above Hibs and level on points with Celtic on the back of tonight's results. So, uh, yeah, positives going into the international break. Yeah, definitely. Good to get a win. Um, sort of, they didn't really do much, to be honest. It was just, we sort of, it sort of had vibes of the game against Motherwell, uh, but obviously the reverse, in that mm. it just sort of came flying out of the traps and just absolutely killed them from the start, and then that was it. They didn't come back into it at all. I, I thought they would maybe, especially after half time, come back at us a little bit more. But Joe Lewis, all he had to do, like his biggest threat was a deflection from Ash Taylor. So that's what he tells you all, all you need to know. I think it sums up Hibbs' night when um, when their biggest threat was our own defender. <laughs> exactly. And to be fair, and that's not actually a jab at Ash Taylor. He didn't even do too bad. He had a good block late on. Um, it was yeah. fine. It's just a bit of a sclaff, which he's prone to do. But we'll let him off since we got away with it. Yeah, and then if we look back at the starting 11, we saw Connor McLennan come in for the injured Marley Watkins. Um, obviously, touched on that Watkins is out for two months, might be, might not see him again for Aberdeen, which would be a shame given he's gone back to Bristol City to recover. But McLennan came in and, and did a solid job, albeit now he looks like he's picked up a hamstring injury. It's typical, isn't it? But uh, no, he did come in, he's done a good job. And whenever he's played this season, he's looked a lot better. I don't know, uh, he looks sort of a bit less lightweight as well, I suppose. Um, Mm -hmm. But, you know, he's looking good defensively as well as going forward. And he looks really comfortable in the right wing back position, which is obviously not a position he's played very much, uh, I can't imagine. So happy with that. It's just a shame he picked up a knock, but probably a good thing that it's just before the international break in that he might have a chance to recover and be back for the Rangers game. Fingers crossed, anyway. Yeah, hopefully it's not as serious as Watkins and he's not out for two months as well because we could really do without that. Although, I suppose Fraser Fivey touched on, you know, it's great having someone of the likes of Shea Logan just to come on and fill that gap. Greg Lee getting on tonight and getting more minutes under the belt as well. Um, and he could probably fill in left wing back and allow Matty Kennedy to go to right wing back. We'll come to Matty Kennedy in a minute because mm-hmm. I don't yeah. think he's suited to left wing back. Definitely not. Um, so that's two defeats so far this season now, um, only the home defeat to Motherwell, which you touched on at the start of the show, and obviously the opening disappointing day defeat to, to Rangers. Mm-hmm. So encouraging to see that um, you know we're, we're not dropping many points so far this season. Yeah, definitely encouraging, and also encouraging the fact that two games against Hibs so far, we described it as a six-pointer, and so did Michael in the preview show, mm-hmm. and we've come out on top on with both of them, and we think they're going to be our biggest contenders um, for both uh, for third place, really. Hopefully we can achieve mm-hmm. a bit more than that, but I'm a bit sceptical about that. And we've just sort of brushed them aside today, didn't even lay a finger on us, really, so very pleasing stuff. Yeah, and fortunately, we, well, we were hoping to get Michael back on to you know, offer a Hibs perspective on tonight's result, but um, he said we'd probably get taken off air if he came on. Um, so he asked me just to quote his t- tweet, which was a cowardly and soulless performance from Hibbs. And I, I kind of think that's quite a fair reflection. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty accurate because, yeah, cowardly and soulless, they didn't, they didn't even look too up for it. They, they were a bit hammer throwy. They might have learned that from Hearts uh, from the weekend. But they didn't. They didn't pose much threat going forward, and defensively they were ropey. Um, it was just all of yeah, it's ropey to say the least. To be fair, <laughs> um, it was just all a bit all over the place, and not the type of reaction you would look to losing not only losing a semi final but against championship hearts of all people. But um, we definitely uh, bounced back far better than they did. 
Yeah, and I just want to touch on that leads nicely into the next point. Um, you talk about Hibs being defensively ropey. Um, we'd only kept one clean sheet in our last 13 home games I saw um, on, on social media tonight. So how encouraging is that for us to, to keep a clean sheet? But also, you look at Hibs, they had three of their defenders in the Scotland squad um, the, well, the last Scotland squad, obviously none of them getting a call this this time. And I think that's their performance like, fully justifies why none of them are included. Yeah, definitely. It was uh, very, a bit shambolic at times from them. But as you mentioned, it was better from us, to be fair. Um, I think not only through their lack of creativity, but we did limit them as well. We obviously limited them in the first game uh, against them this season as well. So um, it's encouraging, especially given... Uh, some of the defensive performances recently, um, mm-hmm. as you said. So it's definitely an improvement and good to go in an international break, not only with the win, but with the clean sheet as well. The defenders will take that. Be a good confidence booster, hopefully. Yeah, and I mean, we weren't. it wasn't a polished defensive display, as we've discussed already. Ashes, Scalaf and Kennedy having a few dodgy moments. I think we were lucky to not concede a penalty when he pushes over Boyle. Um, for me, it looked like a penalty. Yeah, instant reaction was that. I mean, Boyle does like to throw himself down a bit, so maybe that sort of played in Kev- Kennedy's flav- favour, but it was sort of a bit lethargic at times from Kennedy. I think that was sort of lazy, sloppy, clumsy defending. Not a defender by any means, and definitely not a left mm-hmm. wing back. He obviously looked a bit better on the right-hand side when he was there before his injury. So, I mean, it's not his fault. He's, he did a job, um, but definitely not his, uh, his uh, position. That didn't look comfortable. Mm -hmm. And then I suppose one thing we talked about in the preview episode was um, Hibbs' lack of kind of clinical finishing. Um, Michael, you know, spoke about the Ross County game where they had plenty of chances but but failed to take any. I think I don't really remember any clear-cut chances for them tonight. They were very quiet in front of goal. Yeah, it was pretty disappointing from them. Obviously, not disappointing for us, but I think they made the point in commentary to say that sort of very tame shot slash cross that Joe Lewis collected uh, late on was like the first thing he had to do, which Mm -hmm. Hibs must be gutted with that because we've not looked great defensively and that's the only thing they really created. Very poor, very, very poor. What about you? Do you think, I don't think they looked up to much at all. No, and I don't know if it was, they were carrying a Hamden hangover or, you know, they just still hadn't got that defeat out of their system, but um, you know, when we were speaking to Michael um, at the start of the week, you know, I was expecting a reaction from him. Mm-hmm. I thought they might come out and take the game to us. I don't know if we just kind of blew them away at the, the start, but they just mm-hmm. never recovered. But okay, one thing, I, you know, we don't praise McInnes regularly, but he seems to have like a hoodoo over Jack Cross. He always gets the better of him, um, I feel, in these head-to-heads. Like tactically wins those, those main main battles the way he sets us up against Hibs. Yeah, definitely. I think it's an interesting battle given uh, McInnes' previous links to Sunderland as well, and obviously Jack Ross did manage there. Mm -hmm. Um, But he does seem to get one over him, and I think you're definitely right in that Hibs' reaction was just poor, so, so poor. And even, obviously, they've lost to Hearts, and they're probably, it's not a good thing. Obviously, it's not a good thing, but they've got. A, you'd think that's the big chance to bounce back and say, "Look, that's a huge game. Go and prove yourselves against Aberdeen." It didn't happen. But even once you go two 0 down, it was very early on. There's plenty of time to mm. show a reaction in the game, and they just didn't even do that. It must have been. I don't know what he said at half time because it didn't. They didn't look any better then either. No, the second half was very much a non-event, and to use your word, boring. Mm-hmm. But you know, for all the talk pre-match, it was all oh, Hibs have a chance to go second and continue their fine start to the season. You know, there was no talk of Aberdeen have the chance to leapfrog Hibs and we've got mm-hmm. a game in hand. Um, um, Michael obviously touched on that's against Celtic. We're now level on points with them, albeit they do play on Sunday. Um, so for the time being, we are our joint second in the league. But it just shows that, you know, we're still we're still there. We're, we're not to be messed with. And I think, you know, if, if people want to ignore us, that's fine. We'll just go about doing our business quietly. It is weird for a club our size to sort of be just not being acknowledged um, for what they're doing right now. Because obviously, well, mm-hmm. we're now above Hibs. We beat them twice, yet yeah, all the praise is going Hibs' way. But maybe that sort of suits us. You never know. Mm-hmm. 
And then I suppose, you know, we've spoken of Hibbs' attack. Um, Andrew Close was quite quick after Sam Cosgrove hitting the net to, to tweet me and said, what do you guys know? Is it a gamble playing him tonight? Well, no. <laughs> no. I think that's a fair comment. Um, yeah, I, to be fair, for the goal, it looked like he was running in treacle, but it was an absolutely amazing <laughs> finish on him. I'll accept when I'm, wrong, when I'm wrong. I think he probably, to be fair, he didn't play well against Celtic, but he probably was better for having the minutes in his legs tonight. Um, yeah. yeah, I think uh, Mr. Coase is, I think that was a fair comment from him. <laughs> yeah, I know, and I think, yeah. And also, fair play to Sam. Um, I think, you know, yeah, it was a painful watch watching him run through on goal because I actually thought he mm. took a heavy touch, but you've got to credit that finish outside of the foot into the side netting. I don't think any of us expected that when he was bearing down on goal. So fair play for a striker who hasn't scored yet this season, obviously with mm. the injuries, not a lot of minutes. That'll do his confidence a world of good. It's just a shame for him now there's a two-week wait before the next game. Yeah, but no, I think it's definitely uh, huge for his confidence going into the international break. Good to get the monkey off his back, I suppose, for this season as mm-hmm. well. Because especially it would be even worse if then he didn't score tonight and then we go to Ibrox, we have a terrible time there and that's another game uh, without a goal and maybe has a tough time there as well. So uh, definitely positive for Big Sam and hopefully he can carry it on at Ibrox. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. And I suppose one other mention of the strikers before we move on to other players is Curtis Main. Curtis! Oh, I'm so happy he came on just so we can put that clip in now for the video version. Curtis! I'm very sorry for the audio version. Um, what and for those is... of you that are listening, it's basically just Mora from Love Island saying Curtis. And yeah. It gets me every single time. But he, he actually came on and he looked like he looked fine. He did his job uh, all right and put himself about. Did what he was, needed to be done. I think that is probably going to be Curtis's role for most of the season um, or most of his time at Aberdeen. But seems to do it well, ruffles up some defenders. Can't complain. Yeah, and I think the, you know, the way the game went, given how poor Hibs were tonight, it, it did allow us to make those changes, you know, you know, often we accuse McInnes of not going for it, killing games off, but Hibbs kind of killed the game off for us by being so poor, mm-hmm. and it allowed us to take players off and, and give minutes to those who needed it. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, I think Hibbs, I expected them to come at us a bit more, but even though the amount they did, hitting them on the break, we possibly could have got a couple more, but thankfully we didn't need to because they were just so poor. So, um, very, very, very happy with the way the game went in the fact it was just completely dead from so early on. Obviously not enjoyable to watch, but we'll take it. We'll move on. Exactly. And I suppose we should also credit Hibs for not wearing their green and white kit, which allowed our midfield to not be like rabbits in the headlights at Hamden. And they were <laughs> free and pressing. Imagine McCro- the PTSD. <laughs> yeah, exactly. McCrory and Ferguson dominated... The midfield, see what happens when McCrory's in midfield, not a wing back. Hedges, excellent again, you know, front to back, getting up and linking with Cosgrove. And I suppose I should give you the floor for Scott Wright. Oh, I'm so happy that he's... What a finish it was as well. Emphatic. First time. With him. Exactly. Like he's got it in him, obviously. And to be fair, I think Joe Harper's message must have done good there. Because his confidence must have been a bit shot, having missed a couple of chances. And I think fans were probably getting on his back as well. Obviously not in the stadium, so not the same effect. But great finish. Hopefully that uh, silences some of his doubters. And you mentioned Hedges as well. Just before the goal, uh, I was I, I was yelling at the TV, going, and play it on your right after the last game. <laughs> I was hoping he fired it across on his right. But he proved me wrong again. I'll admit when I'm wrong, <laughs> fair play to him. That's why he's a footballer. And I'm sitting watching and now discussing it in front of a green screen on a Friday night. So fair yeah. play to him. Mm-hmm. And I suppose as well, Scott Wright unlucky not to get a second when Paul Hamlin hacks him down and the referee does only deems that a booking. Yeah, admittedly, I was looking at the Newcastle game when that happened, but I saw the replay. Shows how exciting our game was. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly, and the Newcastle game was even worse. Uh, yeah, I don't even want to get into that. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, uh, it was a bit, I suppose there was a couple covering defenders, and you, but you could, it, it could have been a red, it could have gone either way. But, um, yeah, you and Anderson had a few questionable decisions there tonight, but, you know, Scottish referees again, isn't it? I like how you use the word questionable to keep it quite 
PC for this episode, given our recent exploits. Um, I think he got a lot of decisions wrong. Um, Paul, uh, Paul McGinn, lucky to, to stay on the pitch. Two easily bookable offences tonight and only one of them picked up. That Hanlon challenges are read all day long and deems it a booking. I know you said there was maybe a couple of defenders getting back, but Scott Wright's pace, they're not getting that. That's a clear goal-scoring opportunity. And there was a couple of decisions, probably from a Hibs point of view, for those of that persuasion that might be listening in. And mm-hmm. um, I think Hibs will, will definitely feel aggrieved by some of the decisions. You look at the, the Kennedy push on Boyle that we've discussed. There's one a few minutes later as well where he seemed to... Um, haul him down, although David McDermott was determined to blame Tommy Hoven for that. Yeah, um, to be fair, on David McDermott, the commentary, I enjoyed Fraser 5 e despite his horrible accent. Um, uh, what is that accent, by the I way? I don't know. To be fair, he moved away from Aberdeen at quite, quite, a, um, quite a young age, so it probably would fade a bit, but it has gone very sort of Edinburgh, and I don't think I like it. I don't think I like it. He's been back here for a few years now. He's got no excuses, but it was... Like you say, it was quite refreshing to hear someone co-comment on co-commentary that was basically just like a fan chatting mm-hmm. to his pal. It's just a shame that his friend is just so boring to listen to as well. Definitely. I said that at the time. He is literally just watching like a fan. He's just like, he was just claiming, for you, how's that a foul? As if he was in the stand <laughs> watching the game. Um, yeah, I quite enjoyed Fraser 5 He's welcome back so long as he ditches the accent. I don't think I'm in a position to decide who gets to go on Red TV, but if anyone wants to listen to my opinion, then, you know, feel free. No, if they're letting, you know, fans just have that shout on Red TV like it's a foul, then we'll be happy to take a, a fan exactly. alternate view. <laughs> exactly, and let, let us know, just get in touch, you know, we've got the business email, uh, get yeah. involved. Yeah, we'll, we'll need to let Lisa know the, the change of email. Well, yeah, actually, it's a good point, we've not done that yet. <laughs> no. But, and, you know, going into the international break on the back of three points, do you think there'll be a bit of disappointment having to to wait for the next game? I definitely think there will be um, a bit of disappointment. Good to get the win before the international break, obviously get the confidence going a bit more. Um, it would have been horrible to lose this game tonight and then go into international break after uh, losing the semi-final as well. Uh, but, you know, it's... It's good to go up with a bit of a bit of bounce after the uh, win, but it would have been ideal to just go straight into the game against Rangers after a good win off the back of that and try and keep it going. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, but I'm not looking forward to that one. We'll obviously do the uh, preview show separately, but, oh, God, it could be scary. Yeah, that's yeah, that's not what I want to think about just now. Um, but I, I kind of tend to agree, you know, it'd be nice to just carry on that momentum. But it's good to get, given the, the disappointment of um, last weekend, it's good to get kind of back on track in the league. And it, it sets us up nicely for um, going into the, the winter months and what will be a tough, tough fixture period. And it's now three away games um, mm-hmm. coming up for us. So crucial in that, in that sense as well. But, you know, we've tend to... We've tended to perform better away from home this season. So, despite it being three away games in the space of seven seven days, maybe even six actually, you know, it's, maybe we can take confidence from our recent away performances. Yeah, I hope we can carry on. We have looked better away from home, which is weird considering there's no fans anywhere. So it doesn't you wouldn't think it would make much difference? So maybe it's just a coincidence. But if that mm-hmm. coincidence could continue on those three games, I'd be very very happy, boy. Uh, so mm-hmm. fingers crossed for that. Um, obviously, yeah, as we mentioned, it'll be a tough first one. But if we can string a couple of results together, uh, going into the like, sort of uh, winter period as well, be very happy. Yeah, definitely. And I think you know, I would we would normally end the podcast by doing a one word feeling on the next game, but that next game is a few weeks away, and there's big Scotland games coming up in between and now. So maybe a bit too early. To do that, we'll do that. We'll do a separate um, preview show that we'll release in the build up to the Rangers game. So, what I want to do instead, Callum, is I want you to give us your one word assessment on the season so far, but this season so far, not including last week, because technically that okay. was last season. I'm going to go with my feeling on how the season goes for. I'm just Content is my word. Damn it, that was going to be my word. <laughs> You're just so in sync. Oh, you know, 
same page there. Um, no, yeah, content, I think just it's been plodded along quite nicely. Some good performances, playing better football, a couple of bad results, obviously, against Motherwell in the opening day of the season against Rangers. But um, sort of picking it up and looking a bit better, so happy. And I'm glad we've discounted this semi final because it probably wouldn't have gone with content for that. Well, if now that I've uh, stolen your word, are you going to change it at all? What have you got? Um, well, I'll just change content to pleased. I went pleasing and I've gone pleased. I should maybe choose happy instead. But, you know, to be sitting, given, you know, the really poor start to the season we had, and, you know, people will say, well, it wasn't really poor, like, you know, results wise, but that level of performance on the opening day mm. and then what subsequently followed with the, you know, the soul eight and mm. the fallout from that put a real downer on the mood of the season when, you know, getting football back was so important to many people and, you know, getting that routine back in our lives. So it was like, here we go again. It's another mm. disappointing season ahead, but mm. we've kicked on, like you've touched on already in this episode, we've put Hibs in their place twice Hibs are getting a lot of credit. We're going ahead, going with our business quietly. Mm-hmm. And, you know, now I expect us to kick on. There's a gap between the top four to the rest of the league. Hopefully we can just make it a top three to the rest of the league, leave Hibs behind. Yeah, that would be ideal. I think you mentioned the so late thing. I, looking at how we've reacted since then, since we've come back, I think it has actually been weirdly beneficial in that it gave them a bit of time and there is, seems to be a lot more of t- like togetherness sort of about the team and showing a bit more guts and determination that we probably haven't seen in recent seasons. So that's very mm. pleasing. But I definitely, I'm hoping now that we've beat Hibs twice, we can maybe hopefully one day put some distance between uh, us and them. Obviously, we'll, when we play them again another twice this season, it'll probably be two more six-pointers knowing our luck. But it would be nice to have mm. a bit of comfort and not have to stress about uh, them a lot down the road. Exactly. So that's our feeling on the season so far, going into the international break. A happy Friday night means a happy weekend with the Dons winning. So Callum, enjoy your weekend. Those of you watching and listening, we hope you also enjoy your weekend. And we'll be back next week with a Scotland podcast previewing the Serbia and Nations League game. So for those of that Tartan Army persuasion, feel free to tune in. And this time, well, I would say this time next week, but this podcast actually released on Saturday. So mm. next Friday, we've got a very special Aberdeen episode. Calum, are you excited for the release of that one? I'm absolutely delighted. Shall we reveal what it is yet? What do you think? Um, uh, maybe we'll do a couple of teasers in the week to raise the suspense. But it'll certainly, I think it'll certainly gain a lot of interaction amongst those viewing and listening. And we'll hope that you can engage with us based on the podcast that's the teaser we'll go with yeah i like that don't give away too much um yeah definitely i'm excited for it good well until next time thanks for listening and watching thank you but before we go don't think we forgot once again i did forget before nearly (laughs) yeah shut up glenn um (laughs) the winner for the ryan hedges stickers i'm about to do it live let's see who the winner is and Amy Reid, I can't believe as a leader of the fan club you didn't enter this competition. The late entry, you won't believe this, from today, Bruce McDonald is the winner of 100 Ryan Hedges stickers. Congratulations, Bruce. We'll be in touch. Be like Bruce. Subscribe. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yes, listen to Glenn and be like Bruce. <laughs>